Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about alternative forms of the conditional if P then Q. So when we first learned about if P then Q, we use those words frequently, the if and the then, but there's a complication. In the English language, there are many ways to express the same relationship. For example, we might say if P Q without putting the word then in there, it's implied or we might say P implies Q. Also, we might say P happens only if Q happens. Or we might say P is sufficient to cause Q to happen. We might also say Q is necessary for P to happen, and this still has the same logical implication. This one is particularly challenging because notice that the consequent Q actually comes before the antecedent P when we write it in this form. We can also say all P's are Q's, or Q happens if P happens. This is not an exhaustive list, but these are the common ways that we see the conditional stated. So what we're gonna try to do is to write each of these statements in the form if P then Q by identifying what's the antecedent and what's the consequent, what's the P and what's the Q, and we do that by matching it up by, with one of these common conditional forms. I've organized the conditional forms into two categories. Those where the P, the antecedent, comes before Q, the consequent, and those are in purple. And then there are the ones in green where Q comes before P. The consequent is actually stated before the antecedent. Let's look at part A. You'll be sorry if I go. Which form of the conditional does this appear to match up with? Well, I see the word if, and it's in the middle of the statement. So it looks like it might match up with Q if P. So then what would the Q be? Q would be, you'll be sorry, and P would be the I go part. So if we're going to write this in if P then Q form, we could say, if I go, then you'll be sorry. Now let's look at part B. Today is Sunday only if yesterday was Saturday. The only if is a big clue that we're going to be looking at a P only if Q pattern. So that means that the P comes before the Q. So your antecedent P is today is Sunday. That's going to be the if part of the statement and the consequent is gonna be yesterday was Saturday, the then part of the statement. This tr tricks people all the time because they see that if, but when you attach only to if, you get a then. So it actually is equivalent to saying, if today is Sunday, then yesterday was Saturday. Now let's look at part C. Part C has a dead giveaway. It has the universal quantifier all in it, all chemists wear lab coats, which means it matches up with all P or Q. The tricky part about this is that the antecedent does not look like a statement. It doesn't look like a component statement, right? It's just chemists. So what we do is we change that to being a chemist or something of that nature so that we have a statement. He is a chemist. They are chemists. Now we're going to change it to if then form knowing that something like that is our P and something about wearing lab coats is going to be our Q. For example, we could say if you are a chemist, then you wear a lab coat. Here's another example from our homework in my math lab. It says, write the statement in the form if P then Q. And it says, no person on the track is not running. Now, no isn't in any of our statements on the left here. So that could be a little bit confusing. But notice that no person on the track is not running. This involves a universal quantifier, right? It's talking about nobody, none. It's something that's universally true about everyone on the track. So could we possibly restate that in a form that would be equivalent to all people on the track? What do we know about all people on the track if we know that no person on the track is not running? I'm gonna think of this as the equivalent statement, all people on the track are running. And that's gonna help me because I can now match it up with all P or Q. So now I just have to figure out what these conditions P and Q are. 
P appears to be people being on the track. Q appears to have to do with people running. So if I want to change this to if then form, I'm going to say something like if a person is on the track, then that person is running. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to like it. That helps other students to find the video.